Ich bin ich. Hi, welcome to the Headbangers Podcast, Episode 2. I'm Brad. I'm Nathan. So, right, let's delve into it. So, what's in the news today, Nathan? Uh, Rob Halford kicking someone's phone is a start, start of. Yeah, and um, um, I know this has been like a thing for a while. Um, There's definitely been a topic of debate, like... I don't know. I'm I'm very I'm very on the fence about it because in some ways I think people should be able to record the memories and enjoy it because there's so many times when I've gone out a gig and I want to sell people about it and I didn't yeah, take any yeah, videos. Definitely. I'm just like I love showing people. I love saying, "Oh, you need to come see this band. This is the reason why." Show the video, but I also think that if you're on your phone for the entire thing, literally just watching it through the lens of a camera, then you're not really enjoying it. Then you just kind of just you might as well watch it on YouTube if that's the case. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, nah, you know, it, is, it was, apparently the flash was on, that's why I, that yeah. I heard, um, and that's why he kicked it off, and it was a bit of a distraction, but if it, if he didn't have the flash on, um, I think it would be a bit of a dick move, because at the end of the day, I, like, I've done, well, I've not done what he did, I think he looked like he was, he looked like he was recording the whole show, he didn't win, yeah. really looked like he wasn't even living in the moment, or anything like that. I, I think that's the issue, and especially a lot of the older bands. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, because they're from a time zone when there wasn't this around, like, people, no, people would literally would just sit there and be like, oh, I'm, I'm enjoying this. And yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's a bit... Rid- I get some people's points about it because it is a bit ridiculous. I suppose the flash does change the circumstances because then it's a bit of a distraction for the band. Yeah, because then it's literally, like, yeah. so annoying. Um, no, nah, but it's... I mean, it's pretty... Have you seen the clip? I haven't, no. It's pretty funny to watch. I think we put that up. Yeah, no, it's because it's not like copyright. Kind no, of yeah, we'll, right. we'll put that up. Um, I haven't seen it myself, to be honest. It's a roundy face. Put it on my face. I will. Um, But yeah, I I don't know. I'm very in the middle about it. Um, And I know it's been a thing for a while. I know Corey Taylor got pissed off about it. Um, And also the singer of Queens of the Stone Age. Um, He was angry about it as well. But at the end of the day, I think if you go in with your camera, feel free to record a few songs. Um, I'm totally behind that because... At the end of the day, even if you just record like maybe the first song or the last song, you've got that like, memory there and you can show people. But in try and enjoy some of the gig as yeah, well no, because you can't no really be fully immersed. To record the full thing. Yeah, there's no need for it at all. You might as well just watch like a full concert on YouTube. Yeah, you might as well just gone on YouTube really and just watched it through your phone. But yeah, I think you know, record it, record a bit of it, but yeah, make sure yeah. that you immerse yourself in the experience, especially like with metal gigs when you know they get people involved. There's mosh pits, there's singing along, there's jumping. <laughs> Like you want to make sure to have a little bit of that in your gig yeah, experience. No, you, you don't want you don't want people just sat there recording it. Cause I imagine it makes you really paranoid now because then it's like an extra level. Of what you oh what if, now if I fuck up, someone's got it on video for the rest of the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's where we stand on that. Um, obviously, everyone's entitled to their opinion about it, and I suppose there's no real right or wrong answer. No, there, there isn't. Um, yeah. So I mean, so. It didn't damage the phone by the looks. I think it looks looks like. Yeah. Um, I think this is what it stands for, isn't it? Yeah. But yeah. Um. Also, like you said, with Ramstein. Yeah, yeah. Ramstein just um reached number one in like fourteen different countries. Yeah. I mean, that's no surprise it's to pretty, anyone. It's but pretty impressive. It's pretty cool that they can they can have like a. I mean, I wouldn't say a hiatus. I mean, maybe from like yeah. albums. I suppose it's a bit of a hiatus. They've been touring for like God knows how long, but. That they can still come back, smash an album out, and manage to get it to number yeah. one. Still, you know like, they what? Manage to stay relevant. Was, you know what? Ah, this leads into like a bit of a talking uh, point. Cuss. Does on. that mean that could be in the mainstream like it was in the nineties? Possibly, but I feel like that was like a surge of new sounds that haven't been done before. Like new metal it was the whole rap and turntable stuff yeah. incorporated in it, and like we said before, you know about different genres. Like something would have to come out. Uh, in order to reach that high stature. No, I, I I think it could. There's loads of like mainstream audiences that are, like sort of taken from metal in like ways, you know, like yeah. themes and stuff like that that they deal with. So, I think it's really uh, possible that it might actually make a resurface at some point. I mean, I'd like to hope so, but then I think there's some kind of 
sentimental thing about nah. it being in the underground. Yeah, as well. some kind of enjoyment um, to that. I kind of hope it stays in the underground because yeah. you get a lot more better bands. And also for cheaper as well. It means you can go for a gig for a I tenner. Know. I don't want to be paying like 80 fucking quid to go see someone. I know, like fair enough for like Ramstein, Metallica and stuff like that. But if every band was that much, you wouldn't be able to go to many gigs really, could you? I know, can you imagine going to Ingested it was like 70 quid. I know. You're like, fuck that. Be crazy. Um, and also, Chris Adler. Now, do you want to explain a bit about this, Nev? Because I think yeah, you've read more. So, about basically, in an interview recently, uh, Randy Blythe has said that they asked for a comment on Randy Bly- uh, on not Randy Blythe, uh, on Chris Adler's uh, sort of st- like what his status because he's a lot of people, many people might know that he was in a um, motorbike accident in like 2017, um, which is why he's sort of taking a break with touring with the band and stuff. Yeah. Um, like when we were in Manchester, he wasn't there, was he? Yeah, there's been a lot of times and. Um he hasn't really been active. I don't know if he's like helping write songs at the moment because I, I know, like you said, that Lamb of God have a rumored album coming out. Yeah, s- no, they, soon they have anyway. been rumored, rumored for it. But whether whether he'll actually be making an appearance on the album, who knows? But yeah. I mean, it sucks really because you know, if Chris doesn't come back, I feel like it's going to be a massive impact on the music because to me, he's always been the main component of Lamb of God. Like every yeah, every exactly. every member of that band is extremely talented, but. Chris Adler's drumming, like like we said before, makes a unique sort of tone to him. Um, yeah, and without that, with an absence of that, I don't, I, I don't think Elmo God could actually like carry on if they didn't have Chris Adler. But obviously, this is just speculation. Yeah, like this, you know, it could be fine for all we know. But it's a bit weird that um, Randy would just say no comment. Um, yeah, if he knew he were fine. Then he probably just maybe he doesn't fine. want to. Maybe he doesn't want to comment because then he's given false hope. It's like, oh yeah, Chris is returning or anything like that. Because I guess he doesn't know because he's you know he hasn't returned. Yeah. Um. He's obviously taking some time to recover. If that's why he hasn't been doing stuff, but you know, like it's it's going to be a massive torn line of God if Chris doesn't come back because you know his drum fills, um, his his beats, his tempo. Like he's always been such a big component of that band. Yeah, yeah exactly. His drumming's so well practiced and intricate as well. So it'd be it'd be a shame to see him go. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, it's gonna be interesting to see. I mean, like Randy, kind of wants to take the band in a different direction or do more solo stuff. Yeah, anyway. they want to do more burn the praise stuff, don't it? Don't it? Yeah. And remember, we we're talking about Mark Morton's album. You know. Randy on the appearance of that album, yeah, he, he, he does really, mostly clean, doesn't he? Yeah, he does mostly clean vocals. He does like a couple of screens, but like in the in the song he's in now, nah, there's not much, there's not much um sort of harsh vocals. Harsh vocals in it. He just he, he does a lot of singing. Um, which w- so I imagine that like, you know he might be just getting sick of it. Like how long has Oh My God been going? Now? Yeah, I think he's trying to stay away from the whole harsh vocals thing. Um and take like a different direction and then Mark Martin's making an album. It seems like they're all kind of going in the wrong yeah, path. Yeah. It does sound like it. It does maybe you know hopefully not, but like this you know we might actually see you know Lamb of God exit at some point. Yeah, which maybe I guess goes into the next like, topic, doesn't it? Like yeah, yeah. so, who we think our big topic is who we think is going to go next, and when we say that we mean you know whether like a, a bandmate's going to die and that'll end the entire career, or maybe like there's some kind of tension between the members, but. I think Lamb of God's a pretty reasonable shout because yeah, with just yeah, what's going on with Chris, with Randy wanting to take a different direction. Um, I think if there is a Lamb of God coming, new Lamb of God album coming out, I think this could be potentially the last one. Yeah, it could It could very well be one. To fair, I think Lamb of God might be one of those bands that dip out soon anyway because, you know, they've been going for quite a while and, you know, like they all seem like people that care about their craft so much that they don't really want to ruin it. I yeah, they'd like be ending the, on a high, wouldn't yeah, they? Yeah, I feel like they want to hen- end on highs rather than lows. So, but I personally think the next band that actually might dip is like someone like Megadeth. I mean, that would make sense. I think out of all the big four bands, obviously without Slayer, um, I think Megadeth would be next. Even though they are pumping out albums, but I can I can see this like it'd be very, very sudden that they'd just be like, okay, we're not doing it anymore. No, I I can see that happen. I think the people, I think next after that, if it once Megadeth goes, I think then it'd be Metallica and then it'd be Anthrax. Yeah, Anthrax is still the the energetic ones jumping yeah, on stage. Yeah, Anthrax are definitely the ones that I think will be last. To and go. they're still pumping out 
fucking good tier albums you know what i mean yeah, like, yeah, like like for all kings worship music to me is the best that anthrax has ever done and i know obviously among the living is a classic a thrash classic but i think like joey's vocals got a hell of a lot better uh in the recent albums and just the musicianship it takes it to new lengths that's even beyond thrash yeah it, i think that for all kings is such a mint album yeah 100%. um yeah no I, I genuinely think the next band that we can see like that's big anyway going is probably going to be uh, Megadeth. Yeah, no, I uh, agree I, there. I reckon there's a big chance that's going to happen. But also, and I got laughed at this because I, I was actually having this discussion today with two of my mates because I said a potential one would be Slipknot. Yeah, uh, they they that said happen. that's ridiculous, but I think not only like I heard a rumor that this album is going to be the last and fair enough, that could just be fake news, but you know, with all this tension between like Corey and Chris Fenn, um, you know, he's it seems like the other members aren't really valued as much. No, um, it, yeah, unless it's it. him and Clown. It seems like it's him and Clown against the world, and all the rest of his kind of hired members. And um, that's from his words. And Jim Root as well. Can you hear your dogs? Yeah, I don't <laughs> know what the hell they're doing. Stop um, scratching the podcast. <laughs> Um, why is it? Uh, I personally think, yeah, there's a good chance Slipknot's going to go. Like, <coughs> as well with the Chris leaving, yeah, it's kind of shown how dickish some of the members can be. Yeah. Like, it's weird, isn't it? Very power hungry. Yeah, no, I, it has kind of like, the band seems like it's not in good shape. No, um, it seems like it's definitely become more of a business, and when it becomes more of a business, that's you see you things fall out. Shit, yeah. Uh, the passion's lost. You know what I find really funny though about all the Chris Fenn situation? What? Like, <laughs> who are we gonna get to bang the kegs now? <laughs> There's no one that can do it. Uh, yeah, like, what's the application process? Yeah. Can you bang stuff? Well, yeah. I guess so, Here's yeah. A baseball bat, give us five minutes. Go on, give us a demo. Like, One minute. Oh, he did it right. One oh. minute, guys, let me just let me try it again. I just feel like I didn't get it out of time. <laughs> I mean, it's not like they're sat there going, no, we've lost Chris. There's no Going to bang the cake. Yeah, yeah maybe, maybe that's like, maybe that's why they nerfed him. Yeah, the payment. No, like, uh, yeah, like oh, guys, I'm part of the band to, to make you bang kegs. Yeah, but those are clown. Yeah, it's clown one of the founding members. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, he does a lot more behind the scenes, like in terms of writing. Yeah. Um, there's also like Jim Root as well, which I mean that's pretty tense, isn't it? Like I'm yeah, pretty sure he's still a bit salty after being, being kicked, probably being out, kicked out, out of Stone, Stone, Stone Sour. Sour didn't help. Yeah, no, definitely not. But I think that's a potential next band to go. Yeah, definitely. I think it. I think it's likely that they could they could actually um, break up any time. Well, yeah. Hit the fit. Yeah. Don't die this time. Yeah. <laughs> um. So damnation that's coming up. Um, we're looking for a lot of touring bands, but I feel like we want to talk about damnation because that's a big thing coming up in November. <laughs> um. I just want to kind of give a bit of exposure in case people don't know about it, but like it's probably the best thing that we've got in Leeds. Like we don't get we we don't really get much to be honest. Jesus Christ! <laughs> nah, damnation! I'm I'm really excited for it. Yeah, me too. Like Mayhem and Erpf, like headline, and that's amazing to me. I've always yeah. wanted to see Mayhem, and there's still a lot of, like, a lot of big black metal bands that I haven't seen yet. And like, well, I mean, to be fair, I mean some of them just don't tour at all. But what what flavour is you, have you got in that? That's just manga. It's a bit burned there. My, li- my <coughs> lips in them. What? My ni- lips in them. From that. It's not that bad, fucking hell. No, my, my lips are actually numb from that. Yeah, I think it's best you don't take another hit. <laughs> my lips are actually numb from that. That's odd. <laughs> but yeah, so... Um, I feel like I'm having a stroke. But may have never seen them before. Um, I've heard good things. I would love to go see them on the Demistrius Dom Satanus tour, which they did in Manchester. We're not going to that, but then again, they're doing Leeds now, which is even better. Um, yeah, and I, I want to see like them. I want to see Immortal. So that'd be a nice change. Yeah, we've been what we've been two years now. Two, two years, years in a row. Yeah. Um, for those of you who don't know, you know, Damnation is you know like a Leeds based sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, if you're in the surround area, say like you're from Manchester or you know. If you you know if you're close to Leeds or you live in Leeds, go get them and you you know yeah. if you're a metalhead, it, you enjoy you really will enjoy it. It's always they've always got a good lineup, you know, a good environment. Yeah. Only issue is a lot of exposure to new bands. At any point you're not having a fit. Yeah, you just got to accept your fit really. And also, I don't think they realise the capacity that they have. Like I feel like yeah, they, nah. they sell so many tickets and there's a shit ton of people there. 
but I feel like they need to expand it a bit because, like, think about Dying Fetus. We had to pretty much listen to them through a wall. Yeah, I mean, no, fair enough. It was the best band I've seen for a wall. Too but, many. Yeah, and it took the enjoyment out of it a bit because I really looked forward to seeing them. But I was like, there's no way I can stay in this room. It was too sweaty. It was like jam packed full of people. There's no way we could have got to the front. Yeah, um, I, I, I'm <coughs> looking forward to it this year, though, especially with, like, you know, Mm-mm. headlines as big as Mayhem and Opeth. Like, yeah. I, for a small sort of festival, oh, they yeah. do get some really, like, la- last year they had Napalm Death. Yeah, uh, yeah. Theater. There's a lot of, like, un- un- unknown bands that you might not have heard of and that you need a bit of exposure. Like pig fuck. Pig fuck. F- pig fuck. No, it's fuck pig. Oh, no, yeah, it was fuck pig. And they, they it were. Was fuck pig. They were pretty good. Yeah. They're, like, a bit punky, weren't they? Yeah, um, I didn't really, you know, I didn't realize there were like three vocalists. Do you not? Yeah, because I only saw two, and then when the random guy came out, I was like, "Oh, there's three of us." Well, I suppose all right if KC ever run out of members, but <laughs> yeah, um, <clears throat> but yeah, there's a lot of good bands there. Um, you know, they usually get like someone fairly big, like they get like someone like maybe like a nineties death metal band. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure like at the gates have done it, and <laughs> yeah, but then it's a good chance to check out new bands. I think this year I kind of want to see more because we you know we usually get there get to spoons and spend a shit ton of time in oh, there when we could fu- all right this is a funny story isn't it where you didn't know what food we all i was hungry so the guy turns up the fucking waiter turns up and he and brad's there like oh he, no he goes who ordered this ordered, ordered this burger and brad goes i did and then the next minute he comes down brad's about to talk into what what we thought was his burger he goes who ordered this and brad goes oh, i did and the guy goes what you ordered two meals he goes no oh wait he's like trying to figure out what his meal is well someone else ordered a burger goes, the guy just goes oh fucking hell mate i'll just and he just like swaps him out hey man i was i heard burger and i called because i was hungry i know you would have you would I think that was kiwi's burger you almost said. I was also very hungover from going out the night before um but yeah, so go down there Ocean if you haven't been already. Um, it's a nice little festival, forty pounds a ticket. Opeth and Mayhem are doing it, so check it out. So I guess we'll go on to our album review of the week, which is Death Angel, which might add. Oh, it is a phenomenal album, and I think like just having a bit of time with it as well. Yeah, no, um, it's so fucking. It good. does grow on you, and um. If you don't know Death Angel, they're a, a Bay Area thrash band yeah. from the 1980s. Um, they've been doing this shit since day one. And, you know, even the younger bands that are coming out now, they can still play just as hard, just as fast as they can. But also, it's more than that with this album. Yeah, no, like, no there's also elements in there that are different. Also, you know, like elements that if you like thrash and you like Bay Area thrash and you like Death Angel in general, you still like it. There's just loads of different area uh, uh, sort of... Um, st- there's just loads of different things that they've actually <coughs> thrown yeah, like into music, musical like, elements like, yeah. like there's piano sections there's acoustic there's sections sections there's you know like, it's got a lot more depth a, than your average thrash yeah, album yeah like, and also got like a deep political undertone going through all yeah. the even di- they even went into Gajira like, like yeah, so like global like warming global warming that's their stars, yeah. but yeah I think like um <coughs> Like they're 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 a hungry band, you know. They always want to pump out albums, and you know they they've got that that strive because I mean I I like read a recent article with Mark the singer, and he said you know we never feel like we've made it, you know they've never really reached what Metallica have have, have gained or Slayer or Anthrax, and they're still struggling sometimes to even get by, but you know they're passionate. Um, I think that's what's important as well. They've got, st- yeah. they've still got that sort of raw Death Angel sound. Yeah, and you know, I think that's really good about them. I like, still, they're not ex- scared to change things up. They can change it, but at the same time, still sound like Death Angel. Yeah, you know, and that's an important thing. I really, really enjoyed this album. Like all the lyrics were good. Um, the vocals were amazing. You know, there was a lot of rem- like memorable riffs in there. Like, yeah, where got stuck in your head. Drumming is on point. It's just it's also well produced. Yeah, um, it is. which I, I think is like it's always like a big debate, isn't it, with metal music? Like, is it too produced? Um, I've heard that like as a few criticisms of the album, but I, I mean, I feel like it's not an issue for me. I think like I like it with a bit more depth. I can understand the appeal of having it more raw. It just but, it sounded clean to me. Yeah, it sounded like, clean. It, it sounded good. It, it sounded like there was an effort and time put into it. 
Yeah, and it didn't. It, the The heaviness of the album wasn't sacrificed by the production. No, no it, definitely. In fact, it just it made it more clear, and it made it. Yeah, no, huh? I I really enjoyed it. It were it's if you like Fresh and you like Death Angel and you like Bay Area Fresh, you know it's all the vibes. But if you also want something sort of new with Fresh, yeah, it's, it's a good it's a good you know, album. It gives you that, yeah. It gives if, you. If you, you haven't listened to Fresh before, it's a good way to start. And Mark's vocals, one of the highlights. Like he, you know, his, his pitch, his turn. He manages to take us to the highs, take it to the lows, um, and the tempo as well. Like it wasn't just a straight blast beat all the way through. And I think that's sort of an issue with some Fresh albums. Like they kind of they're enjoyable, but they can kind of you'll go through it and it's always oh, it over now. Like there's no moments when it changes the, yeah, the tempo. There's, there's certain moments sometimes with Fresh albums where it <laughs> all ch- it blurs into like one sort of big song yeah and i think that can be quite jarring sometimes if you're 100 really yeah um but no with this there was like a clear change in each song yeah. i never want i never thought oh is this, this still the same song and then have to yeah. check like i always every song knew brings something different new yeah it was something different uh every song sort of had a different like, like i said political meaning like one yeah. song would be about one thing but then the other song would be about another um and then i find that they didn't Diversity. constantly repeat themselves with it no they didn't um so what would be like your highlighted songs i know for me i like divine defector and i came for blood i don't know you agree with them too don't you yeah i i my top three i'd say is define divine defector i came for blood and the pack yeah now i came for <coughs> blood uh i feel like it has a really punky sort of yeah it uh, does theme throughout the entire song it's definitely a song i can imagine would be great live yeah it's made like, for a set list isn't it yeah you know Mm. bit tired mate yeah I'm really tired um, no I think um, yeah I Came For Blood has a really good punky vibe really mm-hmm. pop bouncy sort of vibe and then the pack comes in with you know like a really really chuggy bass well not bass but chuggy sort of riff yeah no it does um, and opens up well and then the fine, Divine Defector, Defector the opening sort of you know um, riff and then everything yeah. like that it's, it sort of sounds like you know progressive sort of riff yeah um, and like I think even the rest of the tone of the song it kind of reflects some of the nineties death metal sounds as well. Yeah, like yeah, it, I, I think there's a lot. It's of not just like your standard thrash blast beat. Like it's kind of like, like yeah, yeah. I, don't yeah. basically get on a death metal I, song. I got that vibe as well. But yeah, I think they're not afraid to experiment, and you know, I also like Revelation's song because I remember, like, you know, it managed to maintain that sort of heavy thrash sound, but also have a catchy chorus. Uh, and I think that's important. Sometimes it feels like a song. More yeah, than just yeah, like trying um, to play I as thought, fast as hard I as possible. Like this, they just all every song went well with you know, complimented the last song. Yeah, um, and it, you know, there weren't any bits where I'm like, oh fucking no, just hurry up. Yeah, there was um save every moment. Yeah, there was like there was a clear you know good. It was a good album. Like there weren't any moment where I was just sat there going, yeah, I wish this song wasn't in it. Oh, the, as well, it's not. It's not a. Qu- it's like a medium length sort of album, but it don't feel like it. Yeah. It was quite short, but it's better to have a, an album that's medium length that feels short than an album that's <laughs> that drags. short that's drags. Yeah, hundred um, percent. Like um, the new Man of My Half album for me, that that was quite a that dragged for me. I think. I think yeah, it was very up and down. Like I liked a lot of songs off it, but sometimes it did feel like it was dragging a bit. Um, but yeah, the new Death Angel, amazing album. Um, I think. I've always said this about Death Angels. I feel like they get better with age. Yeah, There's a lot of other do. thrash bands like Creator. Um, you know, they start off, they want to play as fast, as hard as possible um, and just kind of be out there. But I feel like when they got older and they came back in 2004, like they really kind of experimented more with what they could do with music. And, you know, thrash is sometimes a genre that's hard to come out of its own ball pit, but they managed to do that. Yeah. yeah and I- it's still enough enjoyable things for the old fans as well. Yeah, if you like any of the big four and you like, you know, Thrash in general, you absolutely love this album. Like, yep. yeah, I, I can't really pick much fault with it. There was, um, uh, I'd say one fault, I'd, I'd, if I had to be, if mm-hmm. I had to be completely unbiased and uh, sort of nitpick, yeah. um, I'd say, you know, sometimes there's certain songs that like, what are your dogs doing? I have no idea. Just being nuisances. <laughs> what are you? Can you hear that? I know. I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> Carry on. Um, nah, but uh, uh, if I had to be nitpicky and point out something bad about this album, sometimes that I feel like there may be one, one or two songs that just didn't stick. Like, yeah. Like the two, 
The two songs at the I think end. like Ghost in Me, like the one with... Yeah. I mean, it's got like Alex Leo from Tales of the Burden, which is pretty cool, but it just kind of didn't strike me as a memorable song. I just kind of went by and I was like, okay, well, that's over then. Yeah, no, but I the rest of the album, like that would be really us nit- nitpicking, like yeah, that'd we're be finding, we're finding something not to like. To find something not to like. So on that note, um, well, we don't have any beers to do our thingy, so I'll do um, nine cups of tea out of ten because it's a great album. You're going to enjoy it if you like thrash and also if you dislike a metal album. It's it's got enough depth there um, with the piano sections, the acoustic sections to keep it fresh. Yeah, and I'll give it uh, eight tired Nathans out of ten. Yeah, definitely. Right, man, shout out. Let's Who do this. You got to shout out, Brad. Right. So, firstly, um, I know we talked about Dan Nation a few minutes ago, but I'd like to shout out a little band called Carnation. In like a death metal band, fairly recent. They've only got like one album and maybe like an EP. But um, it's very reminiscent of the 90s death metal sound. So you're speaking on the likes of Entombed, um, Bloodbath. But really, really good. You, when um, you showed me them, they sounded really cannibal corpse I think. Yeah, all the well. vocals are quite reminiscent of like George Fisher, aren't they? Yeah, no, like this, the, the vocal style, mm. style does sound like corpse grinder quite a bit. Um, it reminded me like listening to you know like I come blood. You like the yeah, vocals yeah, in that? Yeah, hundred percent. It did really did sound uh, remind me of Cannibal Corpse a little bit. It's like if it was better produced, it would sound like that. So I think if you if you're hungry for that sound and you want something that's re- replicates that sort of era, like it doesn't try to be anything else but what it is. But if you want something in that ball game, check yeah. check them out. And they've got like a lot of a lot of great riffs. Um, the vocals are a highlight as well, because um, he, he pronounces the words. And I mean, I like I like a lot of death metal, but I think I always take a, a shine to bands that will really try and pronunciate the words, yeah, and it makes it, it makes it sound so much better. Yeah, no, I like Cataclysm. Th- this band's pretty sick. Um, I'd suggest checking them out as well. I really liked them. I really enjoyed them. They were really good. Hundred percent. Yeah, check them out. Doing damnation, and we'll be probably going to watch them, aren't we? Yeah, definitely. We're definitely going to go see him at Damnation. They're, uh, they're really good. And the next one, my next shout is Imperial. Oh, Jesus Christ. Imperial Triumphant. Um, finally got the name right this time. Um, but yeah, so they basically look like they're extras out of Death Stranding. <laughs> <laughs> or like some kind of Star Wars extras. But um, they're very weird bands. Like. It's almost like they sound quite classy. They have like some smooth jazz sections, and then all of a sudden, like, because I remember I showed you, and you was like, "What is this?" And then it yeah, kind of burst you into me, it. I was like, "What the fuck?" <coughs> I I thought you'd lost your head. I genuinely, I was sat there like, "What? What is this?" No, I was just sat there like, "What is?" Th-? I was like, "You're gonna give this out for the shout out?" Like, yeah, yeah. And I was like, "What?" I was like, "Give it a minute." And then it dropped, and I was like, "Oh, that's why you're giving out a, a shout out." But they're like, they're a really weird band. Um. You know, they do have, like, the sort of jazz sections, and then they've got, like, you know, obviously it's it's a black metal band as well. So, but it's a good mixture, and I, I don't think there's many bands that sound like it. It's very avant-garde, uh, very experimental. Um, the bass is, is really good in it. I feel like every instrument does have a bit of personality. It's quite chaotic. Um, but I think I, I might check them out at Damn Nation, because I'm just intrigued, to be honest, if anything. Are your dogs actually fighting? Probably. <laughs> Probably. Um, nah, I want to see them at Damnation just to see what they're like yeah. in general. Um, no, nah, but they're, they're pretty. They're pretty unique. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll give them that. They're very strange, but um, you know they've got. They could pick highlight songs: Cosmopolis I mean, you, and Gotham Lux. They're very good songs. Yeah. You know what? Uh, we'll probably throw up, you know, some clips. Yeah. Oh well, yeah. For the two brads, Brad. You know, yeah, bands that Brad's has just mentioned. Mm-hmm. Um, so what are your shout outs then? Yeah, so my shout outs are Analepsy. Yep. Uh they're a pretty sick band. You know, if you if you like a bit of a progressive sort of sound, even though I did shit on progressive music on the last episode. Yeah. Um no, it's sort of, it's sort of prog experimental death metal with you know, a bit, just bit a of hint, slam in there. Slam. It's just a you know, a sprinkle, you know, a little yeah. bit little bit of a, you know, like, you, you know, you don't, you want to diet, of you slam. want to diet 
so you want a bit of a hint of it, but you don't want the full sort of thing. Yeah. So you know, it's the cook. You know, it's the diet cook. You know, you get a little ooh, ooh. So Nathan, tell me about what an apocalyptic promotion would entail. An apocalyptic promotion would be managing a team that's just too shit for you to even. So imagine this. You know, you just come into like a business. And the, you know the big big boss is like you know you need to manage these guys and they're just fucking idiots. Yeah. And you know you're trying to get them to do a good job and like they're just fucking kill you. With death. It's almost like you a. You just fired, haven't you? No. It's like an apocalyptic demotion. Yeah, it's an apocalyptic demotion. But yeah, so it's, but yeah, you know why should people listen to them? Uh, I think they should listen to Anal- anyone should listen to Analepsy. Apocalyptic Premonition is an amazing, absolutely an amazing song. Um, let's just up, oh, like, wait, let's just throw the opening to the song right here. Um, yeah, no, like, it's insane. It go, goes in, hits you in the fucking face. Doesn't let you, you know, think about what you, what's just, you know, you've just witnessed or what's just happened yeah. to you. If you're it in the mood for it, goes in, it works. you in the face and then fucks off. It's yeah. such a good song. Um, another good one, um, problem is Genetic Mutations. Yep. Which is another song that just hits like a train. Uh, if you like slam, if you like death metal, and you yeah. like progressive metal, Nathan's going for a this face. is a band that's just all collided it into one, and it it's, it works. Yeah. It sounds amazing. It's like if you want, if you want a burger, you gotta get a burger, and yeah. it hits the spot. Yeah, no, you know, it really does hit. It doesn't the spot. need an introduction. Um, I don't even think you need to be really into all three of those to enjoy it. Enjoy it even if you Maybe like just one. one. Yeah, yeah. Um, another band I'd like to shout out. Pretty, you know, same sort of style as the pre and as analepsy. It's called cytotoxin. Um, you know, a little band from Germany. They were recently, you know, the guitarist was recently on Vox and Hops. They've also recently toured with uh, Cryptopsy, uh, Cryptopsy ingested and aborted. I mean, that's on, pretty good to put uh, in his CV. Aborted's most recent tour, yeah. Um, two songs I'd like to <coughs> recommend from them is Abysm Nucleus, which is absolutely insane. Mm-hmm. The breakdown starts off with a really, really sharp pig, pig squeal, you know, and just yeah, and shout out to the pigs. You in the face. Yeah, shout out to the pigs. Here's yeah. a fucking if you want a nice porky vocal. Here's a cute photo of this pig. Look how cute it is. Eat them. Anyway, um, yeah, Abysm Nucleus is absolutely insane. Um, we'll throw up a little clip right now. Yeah. Of Cytotoxin. Um, and next is Ch- Chernopolis. Ch- well, Chernopolis. Yep. Uh, again, another hard-hitting song. Um, I absolutely love this song. Uh, it's insane. Um, Cytotoxin is an absolutely insane band. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyone who likes death metal, or slam, progressive, you all need to listen to these two bands uh, because they're absolutely just top of, of the game. Yeah, no, top of the game. Um, and I can't think of anyone else that's a you know I think would deserves a little bit better. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's Check that's what out. I've got. Uh, I mean, on the topic of that, I'd like to give a nice shout out to um, obviously Fox and Hops, give Matt from Cryptopsy. Yeah, yeah, he, he, uh, he, he kind of saved us a lot, didn't he? A lot, yeah. um, we were very vocal about this, but what we were like, recording our first episode and we putting it out there was extremely difficult. Yeah, um, especially was, Spotify. Yeah, it was removed from Spotify twice. Uh, it took us a third go to finally get it up, which is probably what you listen. You know, episode one finally managed to get up, and it thank fuck yeah. for that. Yeah, and we got uh, Matt to thank for that. Yeah, yeah, we have Mark, uh, no, not Mark, Matt, to thank for that. And we uh, can buy him a, a beer when we see him. Because oh, yeah, no, like, we're definitely buying him very a beer. thankful. Um, I know he likes his craft beer. Let's get him some nice little craft beer. But, yeah, thank you so much, Matt, from Cryptopsy um, for that, because we weren't even expecting a reply, to be honest. No. Like, he's a busy guy, wasn't expecting it. And it did help us out a lot. Yeah, it's, it's given us, he gave us such good advice. And we're probably going to go with what he said because we do trust what he says quite a lot. Um, yeah. Like, yep. That sounds like the best option. So yeah, thank and, you so uh, much Matt, for that, Matt. Also, a shout out to Heavy Metal Entertainment. Thank you very much for the shout out. I've been watching your videos for God knows how long now. I'm um, always pumping out good content, and you're super cool guys. Met you at Bloodstock, and we'll probably see you there this year. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, walking I'm about, looking, get I'm you a beer. Forward to seeing them. Yeah. Very kind uh, words. We owe you a beer as well for the you know the nice little shout out that they gave us on the Twitter page. Um. I personally couldn't believe it. I was like, "Oh my god!" I I thought it was so nice. Yeah, for definitely me by surprise. To show such early support for us as well. So yeah, thank you guys quite a lot. Yep. Um Really, really appreciate. It. And yeah, let's all meet up at uh, Bloodstock and have a good okay, time. Yeah. Um. But yeah. So this has been Headbangers Podcast Episode Two. Uh, come 
Tune in for episode three. Yeah. And I've been Brad. And I've been Brad. Now, have a good day. One sentient being. That's Nathan, <laughs> by the way, just in case. Um, um, and this has been episode two. Peace.